Okay, we're going to get started and uh, welcome. This is the last seminar for winter term for the College of Public Health and Human Sciences. And I'm absolutely delighted to see uh, the turnout here in person here in Halley Ford Center. So we have over 20 people in the audience and we have a lot of people on Zoom. So we're going we're gonna to stretch this out and make it as difficult as possible with and use our technology. We have people here in person. We have people uh, joining us via Zoom. We have two presenters here in person, and we have one presenter joining us via Zoom. So this is a high-tech seminar, and um, I'm just delighted you're all here. And um, I, now I'm delighted to get to introduce um, Dr. Um, what's your name now? <laughs> Dr. Jonathan Garcia, my colleague and friend, he is an associate professor in the Global Health Program, and he has uh, graciously agreed to introduce our guests today and to talk a bit more about the seminar. So, Jonathan, I was just teasing you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Do you, your turn. Thank you, Marie. That was, a, that was a quiz question, wasn't it? Um, well, welcome to the Friday Research Seminar. We're glad everyone's here. Um, there's just a few pieces of house cleaning before we get started, so let me read those off. Um, we have participants in here as well as Zoom, as Marie said, um, and for security purposes, we're using the webinar, which means that microphones are muted. Um, to ask a question on Zoom, please use the Q&A feature. And I will be moderating the Q&A feature during two Q&A discussion sessions, which will be exciting. Um, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to introduce such an interesting and amazing panel representing the Community Health Workers Common Indicators Project, which is transforming community health work science at the same time that Congress, the CDC, and other federal agencies are making their historic investments in CHW programs nationwide, especially as a result of the pandemic. And the purpose of this uh, common indicators project is to contribute to the integrity, sustainability, and viability of CHW programs. And certainly the sustainability aspect seems to be really interesting as well. And so we have three speakers. The first of the speakers is Kenny Mays, who is an associate professor of anthropology and director of applied anthropology graduate program at Oregon State. He is a member of the Common Indicators Project leadership team since 2015. As a medical anthropologist, he is part of a diverse network of researchers in the United States and around the world. And as an ethnographer, he aims to carefully document the process and impacts of the Common Indicators Project. Our second speaker will be Chiara Rodella, who is also here in person. Um, who is a, a part of the Community and Public Health Program Supervisor and for the Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization. She earned her MPH in Global Maternal and Child Health from the School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine at Tulane University and holds BS in Community Health Education from Portland State University. And our third speaker, uh, who is Penny Jewell, is online part of our technology here, is a community health representative for the uh, Norawasepi Huron Band of the Potawatomi in Fulton, Michigan, where she has served the tribal community for the last six years. Penny receives her associate degree in human services from Kellogg Community College, and she is a current member of the Michigan Community Health Worker Alliance, the National Association of Community Health Workers, and Rural Community Health Worker Network. So as you can tell, we have a broad range of experience and I'm really excited to hear from them. So I give you Kenny. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. So I'll just add that both Kira and Penny are also on the leadership team of this Common Indicators Project that we're about to tell you about. And there's three other people that can't be with us today also on the leadership team, Noel Wiggins, and Victoria Adewumi and Susan Mayfield Johnson, uh, a mix of, of more CHWs and researchers and, and faculty members across the country. So 
let's get started with our objectives for our talk. Um, we're hoping by the end of this presentation that you all will increase your knowledge of who community health workers are and the history of CHWs in the US and globally, and be familiar with the history and the culture and the rationale of our CI project. That's what we call our common indicators project and why the project objectives are so timely. And be familiar with the indicators and the constructs that we're recommending and how they were identified and developed with community health workers. And be familiar with our CDC funded indicator piloting work and national evaluation work. And so really quick overview of our agenda. We're gonna start with the definition, core roles and history of community health workers, and then the history, purpose and activities of our common indicators project. And then we'll have an introduction to the prioritized indicators that we've developed. And that's plenty right there. So we're gonna stop and have a short Q&A session in the middle. And then we'll tell you about our overview. We'll give you an overview of our piloting work with the indicators and our national evaluation of community health worker COVID-19 response efforts. And then some concluding thoughts before a second, hopefully longer Q&A session if we stay on time here. Okay, so Kira, you are up now to lead us, I think, in our first brainstorm. Awesome, okay. So I don't speak as loud as he does. I'm gonna use a mic, so hopefully y'all can hear me. Um, my name's Kira, thank you for having us. So one of the things, one of the main ideas that we use in our project called Popular Education, it's a methodology and a philosophy. And one of the main ideas of that is that people know a lot. You should always start with what people already know because we're all learners, we're all teachers, and there's value in that knowledge. One way we do that is through brainstorming. And so what we would love to do is to start this presentation by learning what you already know about CHW. So if you hit the next slide, awesome. So the brainstorm question I would love you all to answer, maybe one or two, or you can drop it in chat if you're on Zoom, is what do you already know or imagine about community health workers and what we do? So I'll give you a minute to think about that and we'll take a couple answers. I think it's a little hard to see. What do you already know or imagine about who community health workers are and what they do? There might be some stuff coming in on the mm -hmm. Q&A too. Oh, uh, just asking questions right out there. Yep. Okay. Uh, like community health workers, could that fall on the under the realm of something like social? Or is that something different? That's something a little different. Okay. It's a nonprofit, but thank you for asking and yeah. for participating. So the question is, what do you imagine? What do you know about community health workers or what do you imagine? This one from the QA says workers selected from the community that supplement health services. And another who says community based officer community, first entry to a parole system. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to give a shot? Okay. So thank you for those who answered in chat. I appreciate that. And correct, health workers are from community. We, and I will actually share the next slide with the definition that the American Public Health Association and the CHW section have come up with that, that explain who we are. So a community health worker is a frontline public health worker who is a trusted member of, or has an unusually close understanding of the community served. The trusting relationship enables the worker to serve as liaison or intermediate between health and social services and the community to facilitate access to services and improve the quality and cultural competence of service delivery. Community health workers also build individual and community capacity by increasing health knowledge and self-sufficiency through a range of activities. This definition was um, created and settled on by the CHW section of APHA, which is led in by CHW. So it's one that we created. <laughs> um, the next slide. So as a community health worker, we do have core roles. There are 10 identified core roles that were also developed 
by between 2014 and 2018 by the CH Driven C3 project. In 2018, the project had a phase two, which also identified an assessment tool that supports the CHW professional development, um, which that assessment tool, along with these core roles, you can actually find online at the C3 Project's website. Um, that is really light, so I'd want to just make sure that you all know what they are. Um, so the 10, the 10 core roles include cultural mediation among individuals, communities, health and social service systems. Uh, we provide cultural and appropriate health education and information. We uh, care coordination, case management, and self-navigation, providing coaching and social support, advocating for individuals and communities, building individual and community capacity, providing direct services, implementing individual and community assessments, conducting outreach, and participating in evaluation and research, which is one of my favorites. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, what you will, know, what you find, what we find is that. The role number five and six, so advocating for individuals and communities, building individual and community capacity, are roles that CHWs don't typically get to play or they're more downplayed within health systems because it's not something that's easily measurable to health systems and funders. So those are ones that we advocate and try to uplift along with obviously the evaluation and the research. But CHWs should be able to play all 10 roles in their work to be as impactful as we know that we can be. Okay. Do you want to say a little bit more about the history of CHWs for us? Sure, thank you, Kira. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. So the origins of community health workers in the United States, they're tied to histories of social movements to advance the civil rights of African-Americans, Latino and Asian American communities and restore Native American sovereignty, which focused on promoting health and health equity. And across the entire globe, community health workers are tied to movements for decolonization, primary health care, indigenous liberation, and economic justice. So ideally, these CHW programs, they would grow out of grace, grassroots community members coming together to address all these issues, the social and structural behavioral de determinants of poor health and health inequity. But these programs, um, they're often organized from like the top down by private healthcare systems as well as nonprofit and public agencies. So in the US and globally, the integrity and the self-determination of the workforce is a principal concern of diverse leaders within the workforce. Um, there's this really broad feeling that community health workers' uh, unique power and potential, it's often hindered by structural forces, um, including the health system policies, lack of investment in public goods, and by healthcare cultures of subordination, racism, and intersecting forms of oppression. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to pass it over to Kenny now. Thanks, Penny. Sure. Okay, so the CHW movement that we refer to in the title of our talk today, this basically refers to a broad national coalition of different partners, but with some shared goals, primarily seeking sustained funding and policies for strong community health worker programs and systems support to play all those 10 core roles that Kira was just talking about, including those typically marginalized roles like community organizing. Self-determination of community health workers, which is encapsulated in a phrase that we often hear and often use that nothing about CHWs should be done without CHWs, nothing about us without us. And also diversity in CHW participation and leadership and solidarity with marginalized communities, all towards the ultimate goal of increased health equity and justice in the United States. The anchors of this national CHW movement are typically state level associations of community health workers, also sometimes referred to in Spanish as promotoras or promotores de salud and community health representatives in indigenous nations in the United States. 
So here are some of the logos and names of just a few of the state level associations that are part of this national movement, including Orchua, which is Oregon's Community Health Worker Association that Kira has been involved in for a while, and the Michigan Community Health Worker Alliance that Penny has been involved in as well. And then some other really important organizations involved in this national movement are the National Association of Community Health Workers, which was actually just launched a couple years ago through a lot of important work. And that's a vibrant national association that's pretty exciting. And then the American Public Health Association's CHW section that Kira mentioned when sharing the definition of community health workers. So our Common Indicators Project is like honored to be a part of this national movement and to play some specific roles having to do with measuring and documenting the progress of our movement and the work of community health workers within their communities across the United States. And now a little more about our actual Common Indicators Project. I'll turn it back over to Kira. Okay, so the CI project, we, the CI project came together because we recognized that there was some like, gaps. There was no way to link what CHWs actually do with outcomes. There was not enough focus on what CHWs needed to be successful in their roles. There was not a lot of attention to system and policy change that CHWs were helping to co-produce. And there is a lack of easy ways to measure CHW work. All of that's not new. And we started, this work started back in about 2014. We were brought together the a coalition of allies, CHWs and associations. And <laughs> for the next slide. Mm -hmm. And it started um, with some uh, groups from Michigan, from Multnomah County, um, we got together, they talked about it, and they decided to create the CI project. Um, we, the initial like, reason for us coming together was to be able to develop our own measurements. The CI project realizes like measurement drives CHW practice. And the idea is that you should measure what you charge on. We don't create our own measurements, someone else is going to do it, and it's not going to tell the story correctly of what we do and how we do that. We recognize payers, funders, want evaluation data. That's just the world we live in. <laughs> and so how do we get them that information that's still empowering for us, empowering and how we measure our work and the communities that we're serving and still then fit within the system that we have to work with them. Um, by giving, if, so by us being able to create our own measurements, it's more, it is empowering for us on the flip side, if we let the system decide what to be measured, which is what's happening right now, it's def disempowering. Um, and we recognize that when we're able to select and measure and thoughtfully collaborate to create the indicators that we want to measure, that we want to use in our own workforce, that we're able to have richer data, that we're able to contribute to the social justice movement that we're part of, and we are also able to give the data to funders that we need and make it more accessible to CBOs, smaller CBOs who might not be able to do this or know what to measure. We've been able to create some profiles and tools in a toolkit, and we'll talk about that in the piloting process, um, that has gotten the, the info and the feedback comes from the CHWs themselves and associations, which makes it more usable makes it more realistic and there's better buy-in because again, nothing without us. Um, Penny, do you wanna say a little bit more about it? Sure, thank you. So in the CI project, we practice what we like to call a radical form of collaboration. And what we mean by that is that we strive to continuously have the participation of CHWs and that means putting CHWs in leadership roles. Um, we use popular education, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Uh, we have a racial equity lens that's actually shown there on the screen. You know, we adopted this in 2020. It helps us to just you know, 
prompts us to develop anti-racist culture and decision-making within and beyond the project. And also, um, as part of our radical collaboration, we use ethnographic note-taking, thanks to Kenny, <laughs> throughout the project. And that's based on an awareness of a tendency to obscure so much of the social and political processes involved in measurement, development, and use. So um, going back to popular education, which I think is on the next slide, thank you. Um, you know, as Kira mentioned earlier, uh, we, we consistently use popular education and it is, it's a methodolo methodology, a philosophy um, of, it's a, of education and organizing based on uh, these principles that, you know, we should always start with what people know and value that that everybody is a teacher and everybody is a learner. We should pool our knowledge and use that to create a more just society. And it's always important, whether you're in a virtual room or in you know, a physical location together, that you always want everybody's voice to be heard and to balance that participation equally across the room. So now it is Kenny's turn to summarize our project's history and activities. Okay, thanks, Kenny. Sure. So the Common Indicators Project, back in 2015, Kira actually mentioned, we got together in Portland for our first meeting. About 15 or so community health workers and researchers from five states at that time to form this national project. And we articulated this purpose at that meeting in 2015 to contribute to the integrity, the sustainability, and the viability of community health worker programs through the collaborative development and adoption of a set of common process and outcome constructs and indicators for measuring, tracking CHW practice. And we're going to show you those in just a moment. Um, over the past few years, since 2015, we've been able to come to a consensus list of 10 process and 10 outcome constructs, things to measure. We've built a national constituency of now more than 230 community health workers and researchers and evaluators and others committed to this project. We've conducted two pre-conference meetings and an invited session at the annual meetings of the American Public Health Association. We've also conducted our own national summits, two of those. And finally, we've produced a couple peer-reviewed publications and a couple blog posts to get the word out about what we're doing. And all along, we've been, as we already said a couple of times, really focused on centering CHW leadership through a variety of ways. Okay, so those priority indicators, thanks to funding from the Centers for Disease Control and specifically their own community health worker work group, a nice, really wonderful set of allies within the CDC, we've been able to develop indicators for 11 priority constructs. And before I show you what those are, we're at our second brainstorm basically. So before I show you them, what do you think would be the most important things to measure in CHW research and evaluation or program assessment? What are the most important things to measure in CHW research and program assessment? What do you think, folks online, folks in the room, take a couple of answers really quick? Yes, thank you. I go to RCHWs for access issues, stuff that none of the providers, <coughs> as a pharmacist, nobody else in the clinic knows. They're mm -hmm. my go-to for all these other things because they know the community of resources. Mm -hmm. So like, like tracking the referrals that CHWs make to increase access to healthcare and social services, key basic resources. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, great response. Any other Ideas. We got one online. We have one online uh, who says community acceptance of CHWs, and another who says for reach of clients and potential clients. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So reach 
of clients, like how many people are CHWs in a program actually working with in a particular community. And you also said like trust or acceptance of CHWs within a particular community. Great responses. Thank you for whoever put those online. Mm -hmm. Any other? Yeah, back in the group. So I have a question. So with the, in the last question, they mentioned clients. So what exactly do you guys work for clients? Or is there like, do you guys work for the community as a whole? Like what, what are you guys doing? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to try and tackle that? Do you want me to try? And sure. So we don't work with clients. We don't do direct service at all. We're working with CBOs and state like programs, county programs. We're working with people who are employing the CHWs and or representing the CHWs. That's who we work with. Okay. Mm -hmm. But are you asking who do the CHWs work with or who yeah, do we just... work with in our project? Okay. Like okay. who do the CHWs work with? So as a project, that's with who we work with, but CHWs do work with clients. And the CHWs that are part of our stakeholder group are working in either um, like health clinics or they're working in nonprofits. Okay. And they're the ones that are working directly with the client. Okay, that answers that question. Okay. Thank you. We have a few more online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so one says overall level of healthcare in a community served by CHWs, uh -huh. expansion of current CHW operations in the community, uh -huh. number of clients linked and connect to services. And the last one has a question attached, ways in which CHWs are building community capacity, which as you noted is really hard to measure, mm -hmm. but so important and neglected. Do you have ideas for how to get at this? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So that last question we'll save until the end. Um, that's a fantastic question. All of the responses that people are giving are really aligned with the ways that we're thinking in our project. And you're going to see that right here with our priority indicators. So again, these were developed, the list that you see here was developed with community health workers across the country. We've got process indicators that we call at the top and outcome indicators at the bottom. So I'll read these for everybody. First is community health workers level of compensation and benefits. Like what does CHWs need to be successful, right? The extent to which CHWs are actually integrated into teams like healthcare teams in a clinic or community teams working outside of the clinic. Third one there is CHW supportive and reflective supervision. The quality of the supervision that CHWs get also really important to their abilities to work with communities successfully. CHW enactment of the 10 core roles that we mentioned earlier. Like how often are they actually playing all 10 roles, including like the difficult, challenging ones with community capacity building and organizing. CHW facilitated referrals, that also came up, and CHW's involvement in policy making. And then on the outcome indicators, we've got participant, self-reported physical, mental, and emotional health. And participant is just the word that we prefer to use for a client or a patient, somebody who's participating in the program with a goal to experience better health. Participant health and social needs. So the number of needs that people have, and hopefully we see that kind of number going down over time. Participant social support, participant empowerment. And then down here at the bottom, it says policy and systems change at the program level and the state level. And then here are all those same indicators arranged in like a really simple, what we call a logic model. So we've got like CHW work conditions, their level of compensation, their integration into teams, their supervision, contributing to the extent to which they can play all 10 roles, their ability to engage in referrals for participants, and their involvement in decision and policy making. And then what CHWs are doing, those actions, 
contribute to participant outcomes of self-reported health and social needs, empowerment and social support, and also the system's outcomes. Policy and systems change at the program level, policies and systems that should support what CHWs do, and policy and systems change at the state level too, because state health departments have a big role to play in creating the infrastructure to really support community health worker programs. So most of these indicators on the left are measured at the level of the CHW. And that happens through, at least as we envision, through surveys of CHWs. So they're responding to questions about their supervision quality, their levels of pay, their integration into teams, whether and not, whether or not, and how often they're enacting all 10 of these roles and so forth. And surveys of participants uh, as well. And then we also ask like program directors and state level officials within health departments to answer a series of questions about the policies and infrastructure, so to speak, that they are building to support community health worker programs. And we really like to emphasize that community health workers bring about outcomes at both the participant level and at the systems level. A lot of times people just focus on the participant level outcomes, and that's part of the marginalization of the power that CHWs have to change policy to improve actual health systems. Okay, is there standardized compensation and benefit? Is that is that there any standard across the states? It is not standard at all across states. And so the idea is that we get a we can get a picture of how it's different in different programs and across different states. Okay. And I think we're actually at our Q&A, one more thing before the Q&A. What we passed out here uh, and on paper, and I think what we're just about to drop into Zoom as a PDF document, is this grid. And this grid lists all of those same indicators that we just went through, their definition, the rationale for measuring each of them, our recommendations on how to operationalize them. In other words, is it through a survey that CHWs are responding to or that participants are responding to? In some cases, I forgot to mention, it's not a survey that CHWs are responding to, but it's like their daily encounter forms or records. Anytime they encounter a participant, they're supposed to note which of the 10 roles they were engaging in in that encounter. So with this grid, you can click on, if you've got the electric electronic version, you can click on the hyperlinked uh, titles of the indicator on the left, and it takes you down so you can see the actual questions that we've come up with for CHWs to respond to, for participants to respond to, and so forth. So sorry we didn't print out enough for folks in the room. Um, but those are going around and you can pass them around and look at that level of detail. We also just don't have time to go into that level of detail. Um, but now it's time to pause for a few minutes because that's a lot and see what other questions come up um, online or, or here in the room. So yes. how do you compensate for overlooked or clinical bias in research? So if we're looking at A1Cs or blood pressures, it's hard to pull out what a single team member did in team-based healthcare. How are you addressing that? That's a great question. I mean, I would say that we're focusing on the roles that CHWs are playing in our project. And clinicians and that are involved in team-based care, they might be using other sorts of data collection tools to get at the contributions of other team members. Um, but we haven't really given that a ton of thought, to be honest with you. We've really been focused on the contributions of community health workers. Other thoughts come to mind from Penny or Kira? Mm -hmm. 
That's a great question. And thanks to the recording, I'll remember it. We can talk <laughs> more about it. Other questions from the room or online? There are no online right now, but I was thinking about um, how do you intend for this to be operationalized after the research um, in terms of picking the indicators that are not too much work on a regular basis to, to use? Um, how are you, the, how is the feasibility? Of it? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Like what we've gone over so far is all kind of like theoretical or imaginative, like what if programs were collecting all these data, right? But what about when a program that doesn't have a ton of funding actually tries to start collecting these data? And that's actually the next part of our presentation, like our piloting work with a few programs across the country that we'll tell you about. The piloting work is all about like learning with a few programs across the country and hopefully more and more programs over time about like what are these practical challenges. Yeah, because we know that they're practical challenges for sure. There's a question in the back. Yeah, if we had to take away two things, what would they be? If we had to take away two things? If we had to, that's all. <laughs> well, we'll leave you with a, a takeaway at the end, that's for sure. But how would you respond to that at this point? We're not at the end yet. <laughs> if you had to take away two things, um, that hmm, the CHW workforce is working on measuring themselves and it's being led by CHWs and that, hmm. I mean, I'm an ally of CHWs, so I will just say over and over again, you need to know that community health workers are so important and need a lot more sustainable funding. Mm -hmm. And we're all going to need community health workers in the future. And we need community health workers now. They're an incredibly important part of our incredibly struggling health system. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm still trying to understand community health workers so um trying to, I, I think i'm trying to categorize it but uh with community health worker it's different from basically being a doctor or basically a physician uh you guys are aiming to basically try to fill in community gaps for like most of those is that what the intent is so a community health worker is a bridge Okay. We're a bridge between the community and the systems. Okay. That's what, that's what we do. And we're able to do that because we have lived experience or close relationship connection to the community. So that that's, I think, the simplest way to describe what we, who we are, how we do it. So we, we are not medical in that we don't have years and years of experience, but that's not what we need to actually work with the community. We have the trust and we have experience in navigating the system and so we're kind of that one stop for our community members to help get access to whatever systems it is they're trying to access and then we are on the other end the systems point to understand the community because we know our medical education all those systems are not built for our BIPOC communities so there's we are in the middle of bringing all that together mm -hmm. Exactly. You want to add to that, Penny? No, I think you guys covered it very well. Just, I guess, basically, like Kira said, we are just, you know, we have, the difference is that we are part of that community and we um, are able to sometimes better build that trusting relationship um, and help them gain that access to care. The one thing I would add is that community health workers have been around for many, many, many years, it's not a new workforce. There is now a push about certifying CHWs and there's a standardization of like CHW trainings that are across the nation. So there, we do have roles, we do have competencies. So we are public health professionals in that way. Um, but a CHW doesn't necessarily have to have done a training. Really, it's the trust and the relationship they have with community that makes them the CHW that they are, or CHR. 
here in Oregon, the, the Oregon Health Authority, like our Department of Health, has a certification program that was co-constructed by CHWC in Oregon. So there's a training curriculum, 90 hours, right? You go, and Kira's trained a lot of community health workers to then go apply for that certification with the health authority, and then they're a certified community health worker, and then go look for jobs with, with different community-based organizations or clinics or something like that. But like Kira said, not everybody agrees with the, the idea that you have to get official training and certification and so forth. Plenty of people can be awesome community health workers without doing that and have been. There's one online. Um, are you looking at ways that community supports CHWs and impact their performance, i.e. Pro promoting their services? The ways that community communities community. impact and no, I don't think we're really looking at that, at least in that in the way that it's put there. Um, but I guess I will say, and this isn't covered anywhere else in this presentation. <laughs> All these indicators are like quantitative data collection tools. But we also like to emphasize how important qualitative ethnographic work is. And I'm an anthropologist, that's what we do. And so like the qualitative work would really focus on that kind of piece. Um, and that's an important one. Thank you. Okay, so I think we got a little bit behind time, but that's okay. I think it is Kira's yep. turn to talk about our piloting work. Okay. So in this last year, we took all of the talking we did and the creating of indicators, and we actually piloted them with um, these three organizations. The focus of our pilot was to work with just a small number of CHW programs across the country to, process, to try to figure out, are they um, can we implement them? Um, we were looking at the process of incorporating the indicators into the existing data systems that they already had or help them create a new data system. It was funded by our partnership with uh, the CDC CHW workgroup that Kenny mentioned earlier and the National Association of Chronic Disease Directors. And the three CBOs listed here um, actually applied and were selected by to represent a diversity of context. So, the Greater Rivers Hub in Wisconsin is a, a, a hub, which Penny worked with. Um, Campesinos Sin Fronteras in Arizona is a CBO. And then the Prince George Healthcare Alliance in Maryland, which our colleague Victoria worked with them. Um, we participated in weekly, monthly Zoom meetings with each of the CBOs. There was a CHW or CHR assigned to work with each of the CBO along with um, either Kenny Noel uh, or Susan, I think Susan did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we were, worked through the process. We had to explain and worked out explaining the indicators, um, how they would be collected, analyzing and reflecting on the data. And through that piloting process, we actually found that it wasn't as simple as here's this form and we laid it all out and just followed the instructions. There was some capacity building even within the CBOs to under, for the CHWs who were participating because we were very intentional that the CHWs need to be on in these leader, these teams um, that we were piloting with. Um, they, we are now in our second year of piloting. And I would say one of the best things we did learn from piloting with them was from the CHWs who said, oh, you know, this tool's great. And also it's not gonna work. We need to actually change this question or that question, or I can't go do this and ask them this because that's it doesn't make sense. Um, and then there were some tools that were only in English and they're like, we need this in Spanish. So there's lots of learning that happened in the first year of piloting. And we're really excited in the second year that we're about to go into. Um, Penny, do you want to summarize our national evaluation work? Sure. So, so as if we weren't doing all of that with the piloting, mm -hmm. <laughs> now uh, the CA project, we're also Currently, we're co-leading a uh, national evaluation of CHW programs that are engaging in the newly funded uh, COVID-19 responses. So um, 
the through the U.S. CARES Act last year, Congress and the CDC provided over three hundred million dollars uh, as four-year grants. Um, they're meant to fund and the scale up of these uh, well, about seventy CHW programs. To um, we're going to address, you know, the COVID nineteen and much more all across the United States, including territories and uh, the Native American tribes. This next slide is going to show us a map, and as you can see on the map, there, you know, there. Well, there's some of these states that weren't funded. Um, down in the corner there, you can see the Commonwealth of the Northern uh, Mariana Islands, Guam, Marshall Islands, uh, Palau, Puerto Rico. They all received funding too. Um, we, as the CI project, we've been contracted to help show the impact of all this funded program scale up. Um, you know, specifically, we're promoting our common indicators and CHW leadership in these national evaluation efforts. And we're trying to show them, you know, how to integrate these indicators at the program level. Um, and while all this is happening, we seem to really be inspiring people in public health and community health worker programs that are just really, they're tired, they're overwhelmed by this pandemic, and then also by this fast-paced grant opportunity. And it is very fast-paced. Um, you know, everybody's very excited that we have these indicators and they're especially the community health workers that are part of this, they're really excited to understand that they've all been developed through, you know, leadership from their own, you know, their own workforce. And uh, so just, uh, I think it was last month, we, we did a webinar for all the recipients um, as they were developing their evaluation plans. And it was very successful and, um, yeah, well attended. Um, we're going to just keep, you know, continuing to assist the programs. We're going to learn with them, uh, both about the benefits and the challenges that we found, you know, as we were piloting for learning. And so we're um, going to talk about that and then continue to promote uh, CHW leadership while we're doing this evaluation. So the next slide, uh, so this is a really big step for us toward our, our ultimate you know, project goal, but we still have a really long way to go. Um, this is, this funding is big, right? It's, you know, this congressional CDC funding for community health workers for COVID response. Um, it's, it's a lot of money, but it's still grant funding. What, what we need and what you know, CHWs and our allies, what we're looking for is sustained funding. Um, we need that to you know, just keep pushing forward and maintaining this progress toward greater health equity in the United States. So I think, Kenny, it's about time for you to wrap up our presentation. We can move on to the rest of the Q&A. Okay, I will wrap this up fast so that we have a few mm -hmm. more minutes for Q and A, um, basically some takeaway messages here uh, from an anthropologist. I like to emphasize these kinds of points that developing metrics involves both politics and science. And currently, like we're really involved in the politics and social work, if you will, of developing these indicators and promoting them. And that's really important work. The, the scientific work, the quantitative validation work of these indicators that's starting and also will continue for some time, that's important too. But this political work is absolutely foundational. So um, final takeaway message here. We really firmly believe that the validity, the reliability, the usefulness of all of these indicators, it would be like, nothing if we didn't actually have CHWs involved and in leading this effort. So quantitative, scientifically minded people, researchers might just focus on 
those quantitative aspects of how valid these indicators are and so forth. We'll get there. But they really need to recognize that their validity is also based on the the, the politics of, of representation and leadership of community health workers developing indicators for their own profession. And that's it. So we've got maybe a couple more minutes here for, for Q and A. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. My little gold stars here. Anybody in the room? Yeah, what final thoughts? So go ahead. Um, two. One, one was are you measuring? You keep talking about the importance of leadership of community health workers. Are you measuring that? Ooh, that's a cool question. <laughs> um, I would say that that is really where our qualitative ethnographic note-taking comes from. Okay. Um, so like so many of our meetings are carefully documented and the participation of who's there and who's speaking and who's contributing is documented so that we can tell the stories of CHW leadership throughout this entire process. But we're not really like quantitatively measuring the extent to which CHWs are leading and participating in the, the CI process. I just think that there would be an important measure as we try to do other activities around equity and inclusion and diversity and making sure that we have representation and the leadership uh, in all of these efforts. Jonathan and I are mm -hmm. taking on some. No, it's a really great point, and we could do that. And there are great tools. Maybe you know of some, and, and I think we we do too that we could apply to to you know surveying all of the folks that are involved in this common indicators project, yeah. getting their perceptions of how well we're doing, you know, so and also like yeah. and the demographics of, of of CHWs and other folks that are involved. Thank you. We have one online. Um, so they say, do you see these indicators transcending across contact and global? Oh, that's what are your cool future question. plans? Yeah, yeah. Want to say something about that? We'd love for them to transcend globally. Um, I know that as we were building them, we were pulling from some of the literature. So international CHW work in measures as one something that we use to create the referral um, indicator. So we recognize that it is bigger than just what's happening in the US. And it would be amazing if these were uh, so simple, it could actually be used outside of the US context for sure. Um, that's my thought. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, there are other complementary or sort of parallel efforts focused on low and middle income countries and their community health worker programs, like their national community health worker programs and infrastructure. And we um, we were in communication like with those efforts and also trying not to push what we're doing on, on, on them and really trying to focus on the United States for now which is actually huge. You know, the United States is huge. Our system is privatized. So it's, everyone's doing things in a different way. So it's a really tough uh, goal. Like our ultimate goal is actually really, really hard to achieve. And if we try to do it globally, it would just be even, even bigger. Um, but yes, a lot of what we're recommending could be used globally and we hope that our, our networks, our, our collaborators that know about what we're doing here in the US will adopt what, what works for them, but we're not trying to push it globally at this point. That's a great question. Do you want to add to that, Benny? So I was just going to mention that we actually just got an email from Noel um, and she mentioned um, a colleague of hers from Belgium that was going to be, that was really interested at least in implementing some of the indicators 
in her CHW program there. So I, I would just say, yes, you know, the potential to expand this globally is definitely there. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Because those global efforts that I was mentioning tend to focus on low, on low and middle income countries. Um, and then there's all the other high income countries around the world that can also use community health worker programs, like Belgium and beyond, right? So maybe our project will be more relevant to high income countries as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so, have you learned from other countries in terms of their CHW programs and what they've done in evaluating and in, in creating these indicators for pockets of social exclusion in the United States? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, Kira mentioned that, like, when we, part of the way that we develop these indicators was through a lot of literature. And a lot of the literature that we reviewed was coming from the work of evaluating community health worker programs in low and middle income countries, for sure. Um, so I don't know if that totally answers your question. Um, and maybe you want to say more about that. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's a good question, too. Is there a question in the room? Yes. Yeah, I had one. So going back to like uh, you guys had like your process chart along with the CHW support condition, uh, CHW Act participant outcome that you were talking about. But during that, I remember you guys were talking about questions involving uh, state policies or questioning people from state policy networks and stuff like that. Uh, I kind of got that, but uh, can you maybe elaborate that a little bit more? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Like what you guys are doing whenever you're getting into conversations. Yeah, we actually didn't um, address that other aspect. That's exactly the other aspect of our piloting work. This is just too much to try and fit into this presentation. But our piloting work is not just with those three community-based organizations. It's also with a growing number of state health departments, often in collaboration with their state community health worker association. In fact, that's what we promote, is that the health department works with the CHW Association in that state. Um, and they are piloting with us the state level policy and systems change indicator, which is a series of questions about what is the state doing to develop sustainable financing for CHW programs, to develop like strong training programs, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually on our list of things to do. Like right now, it's select a number of states that have just applied to to work with us on that. And I think we're we got like six or so states that are that are interested in doing that, and we're going to get to work with them. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We get back to our last slide that says thank you. No, probably too far. <laughs> and uh, really appreciate you all being here today.